All right, Aaron, you said you want to get a low fade. You're going to clean up the beard, yeah. keep it nice and full, fade it in. What are you doing with the top? Just clean it up. Man. Clean it up so not, not too much off, kind of what you have already? Yeah. All right, bro. You also give me a C cup on the side. Say that again? C cup. Yep, you want to keep the C cup? Yeah. Okay, cool. And you you don't line it up in the front, right? You keep no, it natural? Keep it natural. Okay, you coming from New York, right? Yeah, New York. What part? For, uh, Queens. Queens? That's yeah. what's up, bro. Thank you for coming in, man. Appreciate it. YouTube, what's going on guys? Hopefully you caught the consultation. I feel like it's an important part of these videos. Um, and one thing that you guys did miss was he showed me a picture of a low drop fade. Something, um, I think it was actually one of Vic Blend's low drop fades. So I, I kind of know exactly how he wants it. So we're gonna start off the top, taking half inch sections, little by little, all the way through to cut the top's length. Remember, he just wanted a trim. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and take vertical sections um, from the side. So we started with the left side of the top of his head. Now we're doing the right side of the top of his head. And now we're going to go ahead and connect the top to the sides. And you'll see just like this. Notice that my fingers are going straight up, squared. They're not on his actual um, scalp, on the actual side of his head. We're lifting out just a tad bit because we do want to keep some weight on the sides. And we're just going about a half inch section at a time using the previous cut as our guide. And we do this all the way around. All right, so over here, we're just gonna do block graduation since it is disconnected from the top, since he does style it that way. And now we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that the fringe is nice and even. Notice that I'm kind of point cutting it. I just wanted, I just didn't want it to be a blunt line. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and start the fade process. We're done with the top. We're gonna start with the fade process. And notice that I'm using his actual hairline behind his ear, above his ear as the actual initial guideline the bald line you don't really need to bald anything out above the ear um that is going to be our line right there so we're balding out using that as reference to behind the ear and notice how again we're kind of skipping behind the ear using that as reference and balding out around the temple area once we've completed that i got my one guard open and I'm going flat on the head to cut it as a one open. And then notice how I kind of freehand up. I'm lifting up off of his head. I'm combing everything down and then watch. So right there, I was just making sure that it was nice and even. But notice as we go up, we're freehanding into the bulk. Boom, just like that. And I'm using a lot of the corners. If you notice, I'm using maybe three or four teeth to actually do the freehand cutting. If you can, I don't know if you noticed it there. All right, once we've completed that, we're gonna do some scissor over comb because I feel like I have more control to kind of graduate into the bulk. We wanna, we wanna do um, scissor over comb. The comb is guiding the scissors, right? So if you notice, my comb is going kind of out, almost, almost, um, almost towards me, but enough to where we run out of hair as we get to the parietal ridge. So we're starting up close where we left off with the one open and the comb is guiding us straight up until we run out of hair. And this is how you're gonna, you're gonna create a soft gradient um, into the bulk. Once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and fade down. So I'm using my half guard and then my, my no guard blade open and then closing it little by little until that bald line is gone, just like this. And the reason why we jumped to the half guard, remember, is because we started off with that one guard open. 
now for me this is this this is a great technique technique to have control to keep the fade as gradient as possible with with a, a more of a compressed low fade into a bunch of bulk so here we go we got the half guard and I probably close the half guard up um, I start open and then close it to about halfway then we get to the no guard blade open and then we're closing it little by little using a lot of corners of the blade and if there's still some bulk above the blade open look what I did I slapped the half guard on and we just went up a little bit more using corners to to kind of spread the blend out a bit you don't want to spread it out spread it out too much but just enough to where it's it's there's there isn't any lines and it's more so gradient this is a very tedious fade and to me it's the hardest fade to do all right so at this point we're all the way closed and notice i'm using i'm barely going up at that initial guideline just barely tapping at it once once you do that you can open it up maybe a click of the lever and go up just a tad bit more just a tad bit more barely above that initial guideline once you've done that all the way on one side we can go in in detail notice i jumped back to my one guard all the way open and i'm using corners to detail any dark spots that i see all right and we're gonna fade the beard in i'm starting off with my one guard open and then one guard closed then i'm using my half guard half guard open then half guard closed and then we're using no guard blade open and closing it little by little as we go up until it's faded out all right now we're going to go ahead and start the 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 line, notice what I did was I combed a little bit of the bulk out of the way, lined it up, and then I'm gonna comb all the bulk down and line it up again. The reason why I do this is because if with this much weight, if you try to line it all up at once, you're just gonna be pushing a lot of that hair away, and you have to go over the same spot over and over and over again. But notice how keeping that weight around the C cup really makes the low fade pop. All right, now we're gonna do the same exact thing just back here. And this is very important to manage because what I don't want is for it to be too dark around the round of the head. And what I mean by that is where the back starts to round into the sides, sometimes could look disconnected from the actual cut. It doesn't flow nicely into the back. So I'm gonna fade the back out. And I'm gonna focus just right here in the back. And then I'm gonna focus on the round of the head and you'll see what I'm what I'm talking about this is a little trick that I use to be able to manage um, this fade that's so tedious and make it flow nicely from the back to the sides if you've ever done a low drop fade like this you know what I'm talking about so here we go now we're starting to focus on this area right here where the back starts to go into the sides here and we're just making sure um, it doesn't look dark, darker in this area than it does on the sides of the back. If, like I said, if you've ever done a low dry fade like this, a compressed one, you know what I'm talking about. This could be one of the toughest parts um, that really can set your low fade apart from others. And guys, if you're interested um, in me doing a live presentation of this cut, we'll do... You know, it'll be a a, a, a real-time um, tutorial where we'll I actually walk you through these. We'll use um, we'll use actual um, what's the word I'm looking for? Screenwriting, and um, I can stop and answer questions, circle things, zoom in, and just really walk you through this cut. If that's something you're interested in, let me know in the Discord. If you're part of the academy, let me know, and we'll schedule something. So pretty much the same exact steps on this side. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult on this side just because look at how the hair growth pattern tends to grow kind of backwards. Um, and his he definitely has a head dip right where I was working at. You'll see what I'm talking about.
All right, so we did the one guard, we did the scissor over comb. Now we're doing the half guard, closing it little by little. And since I was on this side, man, and I kind of, I'm, I'm feeling comfortable with his hair, I went ahead and used the half guard on his beard to prep it for the fade. But right where I'm working at above that, I noticed I needed to be extra careful, careful because there's definitely an indent in that area. And if you go a little too high with this one guard open and you don't lift off enough of the head, off of the head, you will expose that indent and that low drop fade will be ruined. Like I said, it's a very tedious cut. At this point, we're no guard blade open and we're closing it little by little until it's blended. And notice that I'm working kind of in sections. So like I'm focusing his temple area right now. Then I'm gonna focus above his ear. Then I'm gonna focus on the round of the head where it goes to the back. And then, you know, that should be connected to the work we did in the back already. And by, I feel like by just focusing on these little sections, one section at a time, it keeps you organized and it allows you to use the previous section that you blended as a reference point so that the fade flows nicely all the way through. All right, so we did the tempo, we did above the ear. Now we're doing the curvature to the, from the side to the back of the head. And the term for that is called the mastoid process. We'll call it the mastoid. So I don't have to keep saying the curvature from the side to the to the back of the head. So we're blending the mastoid, making sure that it flows nice. And from this angle, that low dry fade is looking blurry in my opinion. Looking blurry. All right, and now that I'm done with the fade process, we are using blending shears just to soften any lines that could have been created or that were there previously, just to kind of help soften and smoothen out the hair a bit. Cleaning up the C cup on this side, making sure it's nice and, and clean. He wanted the hairline natural. I think that, that was a good call. It's always good to detail after you line up the C cup. So we, we lowered the beard to a number two. We're gonna go ahead and line up the, the bottom of the neck. I like to start in the middle and then work work my way over to the sides. And we're going just beneath the jawline. He liked the mustache the way that it is, so I kept it as natural as possible, but cleaned it up. Now we're gonna do the razor work. We did 245 shave gel. That was a limited edition color. We don't sell that anymore. That was for Tennessee Barber Expo. Shout out to my boy, Tyler Trotter. And now we're just gonna do with the triple cartridge, 245 razor, you can get 245.com. Making sure the beard and the C cup is nice and sharp. And notice that I'm going with the grain with the razor there just to get a little bit tight in the temple area. Found it up, it's looking blurry. Found it up with the, with the shaver in the back. So you know I did use the shaver in the back and now cleaning up the beard. Notice I'm pulling um, the skin to make the shave more comfortable, get a sharper line. And we're making sure that we go across and then against the grain. Guys, this is the before, all the way from New York to Tampa to get that blurry low drop fade. Guys, I appreciate you guys watching the video. If you're new to the channel, we drop daily content every single day. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say, but I'll see you guys tomorrow.